as I had mentioned about a week ago, I was going to address this passage in Acts that's at the top of your handout tonight on Acts 26, verses 6 to 8, and talk about the topic of re uh, the resurrection. And I uh, just want to go back over that uh, Acts verse. Paul, uh, Paul was uh, arguing uh, with the King Agrippa, arguing in the classical sense, making a, a, an argument for the gospel against those who were accusing him of all sorts of things. And Paul says, And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. <clears throat> and uh, if you skip down a verse, you'll see what that promise is about. Why should it be thought an incredible thing with you that God should raise the dead? And uh, he says, uh, verse 7, under which the promise our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I'm accused of the Jews. That was Paul's hope. This, the resurrection of Christ was his hope. He says, that's what we've been waiting for. That's what he said we've been waiting for amongst the Jews for so long. And so I want to establish uh, three th three things tonight. I want to establish actually four. Uh, that life doesn't end with our death. There was a promise upon which the believer's hope was built and that the Father would raise up the Son and that uh, it's the believer's hope that they shall also be raised uh, with the Son and that uh, what is the meaning and the effect of this resurrection and the, and the and to conclude, so point number one, just to establish, because not everyone in the world believes it, certainly, that life doesn't end with our death. Turn to John uh, chapter 5, if you would. There are some who think, you know, that you'll come back as a, depending on how you lived, you'll come back as a different animal or a different thing. Uh, others believe you just disappear and that's the, you know the end is the end and all that kind of stuff what saith the word is the issue and um, in John chapter 5 verse 26 Jesus actually here quoting from Daniel uh, you can go to Daniel 12 at your leisure there I give you that particular verse as well because Jesus is quoting from that he says for as the father has life in himself and so gives so he hath given to his son to have life in himself and has given authority to execute judgment also because he's the son of man. Marvel not this at this, for the hour is coming in which, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So there's, <clears throat> you know, Jesus clearly believed there was a, an afterwards to, you know, for every person on the face of the earth. Um, even amongst the Jews, this wasn't necessarily believed. It's kind of interesting. The Sadducees didn't believe in a resurrection afterward, and they they kind of tried to argue Jesus uh, into that. Um, and I thought the Sadducees would have been the liberals, but their argument was it wasn't really clear in the Old Testament that there that that, that there was actually a resurrection. And to turn to Luke. And you can see Jesus arguing with the Sadducees about this in Luke chapter twenty. He goes ahead and gives them a, a correction since they were totally against the idea of uh, that men would live beyond, the, beyond their grave. And in Luke chapter 20, and verse, beginning in verse 37, he's arguing with the Sadducees. He goes, now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush when he called the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. So he's basically he's saying when Moses called him the Lord, of, the, the God of Abraham, he was, wasn't saying he was the, that, that was the God of Abraham, and Abraham is long gone. He's saying currently, as in he is, you know, when he was speaking to the Lord, that uh, this was the current state, that Abraham, who is long since dead, uh, was still, he was still the God of Abraham at that time which meaning that Abraham was uh, uh, lived beyond the grave, lived beyond the grave, as did Isaac and as did Jacob. 
So Jesus corrects the Sadducees on their issue that there is no nothing after after death, and Jesus makes it plain. Not only that he says, um, you know, there's going to be a, uh, a a judgment um, after death. There's also that uh, that there's life after life after death. So that's point number one. The second point is. <clears throat> Uh, the believer's hope is built on the resurrection of Christ. Turn to uh, Luke chapter 24. So you're right there near Luke. Turn a few pages over. <clears throat> and this is when uh, Jesus had died and was now resurrected. And uh, beginning in uh, verse 22, uh, certain women... Uh, Jesus is walking with these two. They don't know that it's Jesus. And it says certain women also, they're talking to Jesus saying, certain women came and said that they'd seen a vision of angels, which said that Jesus was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even as the, so as the women had said, but him they saw not. And then Jesus said this unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory. He said, you know, this is what the word said, that this was going to happen. This, this, that there would be this suffering, and there would be this resurrection and this glory. And he said, <laughs> and with respect to that, he says, oh, fools and slow of heart to believe it. It was right there. It was right there. Turn to Psalm 16. Uh, this is a, a verse, I, I think I, yeah, I actually have it written out there for you. This is the one that Peter used uh, in Acts chapter 2, when he was talking about this is proof that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. He said, you know, this is the fulfillment of Psalm 1610 for when, when God said, I'll not leave for you, you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will he suffer your holy one to see corruption. And that corruption, first of all, that holy one is singular there. And he would not suffer the holy one to see corruption or that is to say his body wouldn't decay and, and rot. He was only in the grave three days, if you recall. So Lazarus was in four days, and Martha said, ah, he, you don't want to let him out. He'll stink. Don't even open the grave. But uh, he was, uh, the Father would not suffer Christ Jesus to suffer corruption, raised, raised him again after three days. Um, this is very similar. Turn to Genesis, and we're going to go to Genesis and then Hebrews. In in picture or type, if you will, you saw this in the life of uh, Abraham and Isaac. In Genesis 22, and we'll see some commentary on that in, he in Hebrews. But you may remember the story. Uh, God told Abraham to take his son up to the mountain and sacrifice him there which is uh, just a mind-blowing kind of a thing. And those of you who are parents, you know that this is, this is an amazing, uh, awful thing for Abraham even to consider. And, um, and, th and so they saddled up in verse 3 of 22. They saddled up the ass. They claved the wood. They, they head their direction. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. That's where he'd sacrifice his son. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So he fully expected and saying, I am coming again to you. Even though God has told me to take him up there and slay him, he will be raised again. I will bring him back. He will come back. And then uh, going on to uh, um, Verse 6, he says, Abraham took the wood, the offering laid it on Isaac's son. Now up they went. And um, verse 7, Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went, both of them together. God will provide that offering, and that offering will rise again. That offering will rise again. Turn to Hebrews 11. You'll see this kind of explained by Paul. In 
in Hebrews 11, verse 17, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So we see that that idea of the, the resurrection and, and, uh, and the hope of the believer is that this holy one, the holy one wouldn't see corruption. He would be raised again. Uh, third point I would want to make is it's the believer's hope they'll be raised with Jesus. Turn to 2 Corinthians. I'm going to go through about four verses here on this in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 4. Um, let's start in verse 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death works in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. So that the believer's hope is that, uh, that the same Lord which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by this Jesus, by this work of Jesus, his sacrifice, and uh, on our behalf, and uh, we'll be raised up with him. Turn to uh, Colossians chapter 2. I guess I could sum it up and say, Christ's resurrection is our resurrection. In Colossians chapter 2, it says in verse 12 that we are buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who's raised him from the dead. So we see that uh, uh, the believer buried with Christ in, in baptism, uh, our death in, in a type, if you will, and uh, raised again from the dead by the, to the operation of God. Turn to um, Hosea in the Old Testament, right before Joel. right after Daniel, chapter 6. This is the idea that we were raised in Christ, that his death was our death. His, his, his uh, being raised again is our resurrection. In uh, Hosea 6.1, it says, Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He is smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, <clears throat> and we shall live in his sight. It's this idea that we're risen in Christ, and that therein lies our hope. His resurrection is ours. Uh, turn to um, um, Job chapter 19. This, um, you can see I wrote, I wrote down there under the conclusion, Job asked this question, uh, if a man dies, will he live again? I guess that's the, uh, that's the question of the evening. If a man dies, will he live again? And, and uh, in Job and chapter 19, um, in verse 25, Job said this, he said, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, <clears throat> 
and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. He's making sake. My body isn't going to be gone, but somehow or another in my flesh I'm going to see this God that I worship. And uh, um, so, it, so it is true. So what is the meaning of that and the effect of the resurrection? Well, there's two points I'd make on that. Uh, one is that the means his resurrection means the sacrifice has been accepted. That his that Christ's sacrifice was accepted by the Father, and that that payment for sin was once done once for all. That's point number one. I'll turn to a verse on that. And the second point is that his resurrection is our justification. We stand justified before God in that in that death, burial, and resurrection. Turn to Hebrews chapter ten on this, and then we'll turn to Romans. You know the uh, the apostles always in their in their messages, whenever they were called upon to preach the gospel, and whenever and wherever they did it, the centerpiece of that preaching was always the resurrection. It was always the resurrection, and and you can see why in Hebrews chapter ten. <clears throat> Verse 10, uh, Paul says, By the which will, that's uh, God's will, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Uh, every priest that stands in ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he's perfected forever them that are sanctified. That resurrection is is proof positive that the Father accepted the sacrifice. If he if not, he would have never risen again. If the, if the sacrifice was unacceptable, just like in the Old Testament, if the high priest had gone in there with uh, with uh, blemished sacrifices, he would not have come out again. They would have had to drag him out. But uh, this. High priest, when he went in and made the, made the sacrifice once for all, he came back out after three days, rose again by the Father. Let's turn to Romans chapter four. This is a <clears throat> beautiful verse on the uh, resurrection and the impact and the meaning of the resurrection. It should be emblazoned on our mind in Romans four. Uh, beginning in verse 20, speaking here of Abraham and his faith, says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God that there would be a resurrection. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. He was going to raise his son up. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Delivered for our offenses, raised again for our justification. That, that, re that resurrection was our hope, that we would be raised as well. That one day we would stand in this flesh and see God. So... <clears throat> In conclusion, if a man dies, will he live again? Uh, that, that's the question. Turn to Isaiah uh, 26. I think, well, actually, yeah, Isaiah 26. I don't have that one written out there for you. Isaiah um, 26 and verse 19, it says, Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth and the earth shall cast out the dead. So there's, again, this hope of the believer that in, you know, that though we die, it's not the end. We shall, we shall, uh, 
arise again, and that's enough to cause a, an awakening and a singing. Now, how do we know this? I'm going to give you a couple of points of proof. How do we know this for a fact? Turn to John, or John chapter 11 there, one of my favorite verses in the scripture. Martha was speaking to Jesus after Lazarus was dead, and Jesus showed up late in her mind. And she says to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother hadn't died. You've done so much healing. I, that was, I guess, a reasonably true statement. But that was not what God intended. And she says, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Wow. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which, which should come into this world. Wow. And that's just, to me, that's just, is an, a, just a, that bring tears to your eyes on that one. He is the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though we were dead, yet shall he live. And um, so we can rejoice on this. Christ's resurrection, he's paved the way. He's paid the, paid the price for sin, charged his righteousness to us, and taken our sin upon himself. And as it says in Malachi 4, 2, But unto you that fear, the, fear my name, says the Lord, shall the Son of Righteousness, that's Christ Jesus, arise with healing in his wings. And that healing is for all that call upon him and call upon him in hope and put away all their hope in themselves that their nature and the world teaches them and lay all upon him all, all their hope and trust. And uh, that's the believer's confidence that Christ's sacrifice has been accepted. We know that to be so. <laughs> I like it. Uh, it's as simple as, as as Jesus said to uh, those two walking uh, walking after his death. Oh, fools and slow of heart to believe. Didn't you know it's what the word said? I had to, he, he had to uh, uh, take upon himself that sin. He had to pay that sin debt on the behalf of his people. And he's risen up into his glory. And so there is hope for each and every soul that we might rise with him in Christ uh, and uh, lay down the, the burden of our self self uh, affection and our thing any notion of our own ability to undo the situation and look to Christ that his death is our hope his resurrection our justification pastor chuck would you close us in a word of prayer